This is the TS3 head as well. I had the TSI. I don't know, something about it just didn't look quite right to me. Yeah, you want to film this right here? Yeah. What's good, everybody? It's chilly, so I'm putting on a jacket. Welcome back to Ben Haddon Golf. It's a very requested video. I would do the thing that YouTubers do where they, like, you know, screenshot every single request they get and pop it up on the screen. I could show you just how many times I've been asked to do a what's in the bag video. Even though I, I think I do one every year. I think it's kind of a tradition every every year on the year I do a what's in the bag. So here's this year's. I think I've got an all new club since I last did a what's in the bag. I did a quick one on TikTok a while ago, but it wasn't super in depth. I only had a minute, but now I have unlimited time. So I'm gonna, I'm really gonna milk it. I'm gonna make sure I take advantage of how much time I have here. Let's start, we'll start with the wedges. I think the way Jack did it was pretty good. Well, first I got this, this little Roback hoodie here. This, I usually keep something warm in the bag. This time of year when the weather could dip, got this Roback hoodie, it's the best. It's chilly, so I'm putting on a jacket. If you want a Roback hoodie, link's in my bio. You can head to their website. I get a kickback. But wedges here, we got the uh, 58M. I travel quite a bit. I play in a lot of different areas. And for me, the 58M, for my money, is the most versatile wedge. So this, this club, this bounce, I think, is better on like softer conditions. This one's good for firm conditions, but it also performs pretty well in soft conditions. So I like having a couple wedges around that I feel are pretty versatile. Hey guys, I'm back in Texas. This time I'm in Houston instead of Dallas. Since I filmed this What's in the Bag video, I've actually realized I forgot to include a couple things. One, I changed my uh, 58 degree wedge. I changed it to the Wedgeworks Low Bounce K. So Wedgeworks Wedge. Um, the Low Bounce K is essentially it's the K grind, but with five degrees of bounce instead of 14. I, I like the, the wide sole on the bottom of this wedge. Um, I like the wide sole on the bottom of the K, but the stock K grind with the 14 degrees of bounce just didn't give me the versatility I needed to be able to hit like higher shots off of the ground. Um, but I really like the, the wide sole because it, it prevents it from digging. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. I can use this in soft conditions because of the wide sole, I can also use it in firm conditions because of how low the bounce is. <clears throat> I'm still trying to master this thing into the greens. It's, it tends to be a little hot on soft conditions uh, because of that low leading edge. It can tend to dig and get these uh, shooters, but I'm working on shallowing out my swing a little bit with those shots. So this low bounce K is going to stay in the bag. I love the versatility around the greens. Just really kind of trying, trying to dial in like the 80 to 100 yard shots with it. 50 degree, 8F, Jack carries a 12, but I, I prefer less bounce to more. I think that's because I usually play a little bit firmer conditions than he does. This is a pitching wedge, it's a 44 degree, which is two degrees strong as standard, but it's the T100S, which actually goes into the rest of my irons. Shafts in the in the wedges, I just got, there. there's no shaft bands on here, but these are all S300 shafts. A um, little softer than my iron shafts, but you know they play well, so I, I keep them in there. I don't really swing too hard at my wedges, so I like keeping the little softer shaft in there to force me to time it a little better. This is the irons here. We got the eight iron here. I got a little bit of lead tape on the underside of every one of my irons. It's just it's it's like a, a swing weight and a half worth of lead tape. It's not too much, but it does kind of balance them out better for me. Got the Project X 7.0s. These are pretty much rebar, but I. I've been told I need them. Got the Golf Pride Multi Compounds. These are the best grips that exist. I had Z cords for a while. I wasn't really too obsessed with them. They were just so firm. It was starting to bother me on the golf course. So I went back to the Multi Compounds. They're a little bit softer than the Z cords. Um, I think everybody just kind of has a certain softness they prefer. In theory, I like a firm grip because it doesn't allow for too much play on the way down, but it's all just about feel, I think. It matters so little that it's just so much more about feel than it is uh, like technically what's supposed to be right. 7.0 shafts all the way through the irons. And like I said, these are all two degrees strong, so they fly a little bit farther. For me, that just means that it launches a little bit lower. I hit the ball pretty high. I hit it pretty hard. I want it to go lower and spin less. And that's what these 2100S have done for me. Driving iron here, I got the X7 Dynamic Gold True Temper. And this is the U500 head. I think the, two, the T200 is the new Titleist head. I might get one, but this thing performs so well for me that I'm gonna keep it in the bag, I think. Same thing, mid-sized, multi-compound, gold grip. And the next thing I forgot to mention is this year, um, hybrid. And I know I'm typically, you don't see guys of swing speed like mine um, that hit hybrids, but typically the two iron does the job just cause you know, 
I can get this two iron up into the air pretty well. If I'm playing in super firm conditions and there's not a lot of wind, but the greens, there are greens that I need to be able to hold from like 250, 260, like let's say there's a par five or like a par three that's super long that I want to be able to hold the green with, that's what I use this for. This is a Apex Callaway, Apex Pro, um, 20 degree hybrid. You can see right there, it's a 20 degree three hybrid with a Ventus hybrid shaft. This is the 9TX. Um, it's a pretty stiff shaft. It's not going to let the it's not going to let it get too high up into the air. But the loft and the build of this hybrid allows me to hit it a little bit higher. Um, there are very rare occasions where I got you know let's say it's a 265 yard shot into a par five, um, and I don't think that I'm going to be able to hold it with this two iron. That's when I put this in the bag. It's not very often. Maybe once every three or four tournaments I'll put this in the bag, but when I do have it, it's very, very handy. Being able to hold a green from 260 can, can save you sometimes a full shot around and over a four day event, those four shots can be pretty, pretty valuable. So this is a good club to have in the bag. Don't use it super often, but it does serve a purpose. With the three wood here, got the 7X Ventus. With the TS3 head, it's a TSI head cover, but a TS3 head, I hate to lie to you guys, but yeah, Ventus 7X, same grip mid-sized multi-compound. The reason I put the TS3 back in the bag is because I obliterated the TSI3 head. I shattered it to, I'll put some pictures on it, but it was the worst cracked head I've ever seen in my life. So I put the TS3 back in the bag and I just like it so much that I'm probably not gonna put a TSI back in anytime soon. Three wood is kind of one of those clubs where if you find one that works for you, you, don't, you just don't mess with it. This is the TS3 head as well. I had the TSI. I don't know, something about it just didn't look quite right to me. Here, you wanna film this right here? Yep. The leading edge on the TS3, here, I'll, I'm gonna, you care if I grab one of your TS? Go for it. This is Jack's driver here. If you guys wanna watch Jack's What's in the Bag, he's got a couple circle T putters, it's pretty cool. So go back to my channel, watch that video if you wanna see that. But the difference between the TSI3 and the TS3, for me is just that this leading edge on the TS3 is a lot sharper. So I have an easier time lining, like squaring this up. Whereas with this club, I mean, it's it's totally personal preference. Like this club is great. The TSI3 is probably a better driver overall, but the TS3 for my money just looks a little bit better. So I went back to it. I still hit it pretty far. I haven't really noticed a whole lot of lost distance going back to the TS3. Really, I just like the way it looks better. And for me, that's way more important than three miles an hour ball speed. Uh, let's see. Finally, we got the putter, it's the Scotty Cameron. Mine's, aren't, mine's not a circle T, but I love it just the same. I stamped my own name into here because I've heard one too many horror stories of people having their putters ripped out of their bags at tour events. So I just wanted something to make it like clearly mine. Um, I dumped this putter in acetone, stripped all the paint out of it, filled the dots black and left everything else empty. So there's no, there's no paint in this sight line here. There's no paint anywhere except for in the dots. And I just, I like the way it's super clean. Put a C, uh, KBS CT putter, CT tour putter shaft in here. Got a Lampkin grip, actually. This was a suggestion from Jack. This is deep etched. And if you look down this grip, it's got a paddle shape, which means that it's narrow at the top, gets wider, and then gets narrower at the bottom. And for a while, this putter shape was banned on tour. Ben Crenshaw got this banned because he, so, he was way too good at putting with it. But then Lampkin was able to develop a USGA conforming paddle grip shape by making the overall shape of the grip um, consistent, but just having the top have the paddle shape to it. And I like it because I can wrap my left hand around it a lot easier. And then with my right hand, I don't put a lot of pressure in my right hand, but it allows me to keep just the fingers on the underside of it, which I appreciate. And just something about a paddle grip just feels right. So there's the putter, there's all the clubs. Now, finally, let's move to the stuff that's in the bag. Actually, got one more thing here. Um, the towels I got, normally I wouldn't be putting too much stock into the towels, but uh, I wanted to shout these guys out. This is, if you don't follow Monday Q Info on Twitter, he's one. He's probably the best golf Twitter account there is. First got the, got the APT towel. Shout out to All Pro Tour. If you guys wanna see my tournament scores, go check those out. And then here we got uh, this towel that the Monday Q Info guy was in, was nice enough to send me. It's went a little too windy for you to see it clearly, but it says any given Monday on it. It's a pretty cool little towel. Uh, he just follows all the Monday qualifier info and keeps everybody posted. 
alignment sticks. I got Good Sticks Golf here. Got my initials on this one, and then Good Sticks Golf on there. It's supposed to be magnetic. These are supposed to stick together, which keep them organized in your bag. Fortunately, we had a casualty the other day. I knocked the magnet out of the tip of this alignment stick, which uh, very unfortunately means that they don't stick together anymore. So Good Sticks Golf, if you're seeing this video, I love your alignment sticks. If you want to send me another uh, set with some magnets in the tip, it'd be greatly appreciated. Let's move into the bag. We got the blender bottle. It's the best bottle for on the golf course. Um, and the reason for that is it's got the wide mouth so I can drop any kind of supplements or hydration in there that I need to. Like I got some liquid IVs in here. Um, makes it a lot easier to dump it in there. I hate walking and trying to dump stuff into, you know, a, an opening that's the size of like a Nestle bottle. I think that sucks. So this is the best way to stay hydrated on the golf course, in my opinion. In this side pocket, got a glove case. I don't think there's a glove in it. I believe that glove is right here. So foot joy stays soft. They are good gloves. Um, they're fine. I mean, I've, I, I've never really, there's no, I think pretty much any golf glove is gonna perform just about the same. If it's Cabretta leather, if it's tour leather, you're gonna be getting a good, good product. Titleist Pro V1s in my golf ball. Um, I use this little line right here that comes from this stencil. This is the Hank Haney Impact System. And if you look at this from just like dead above it, that line right there looks flat. And I can line my putter face up with it. So that's why I use that line. Bunch of bunch of tees and balls in here. I got a few, um, got a few ball markers that I like to use. Just basically a bunch of old coins. And then in my pocket, actually I took this out of my bag already. Um, but this usually goes in my bag. I take my watch off when I get ready to play, throw it in the bag, and then I, I usually have my ball marker and my divot tool in the pocket where I swap out my watch for, and that's what I do at the beginning of every round, and at the end of every round, I swap them back. So I never lose these, this super cool divot tool. It's the Trunk Slammers Collective divot tool. If you want one, head over to bhg.golf. You can get yourself one. But I always, at the beginning of every practice day, swap them out, and then I swap them again at the end of the day. It's a good way to make sure I never lose uh, divot tools and ball markers because I always lose them right away. Let's see here. Um, in this pocket, as I mentioned, I got a couple liquid IVs. Got some snacks, some crackers. I actually have this phone stand, but it's kind of useless because it has. To, I have to have a tripod to link it into, and I don't carry a tripod around, so I don't know why I have this in here, but I do. Let's see. What else do I got? Um, a screw, which I use to link up to any tripod if I do find it. Let's see, a couple other things in here. Got a few gloves. Uh, I don't have 25 gloves like Jack does in his bag, but I got a few. Bottle of sunscreen. I actually have two bottles of sunscreen. It's very important. I keep these in my bag. I don't, you know, I wear them probably every other round. These are the Oakley Radar Range sunglasses with the Iridium, the Golf Iridium lens. You know, they, they're, they're good for reading greens. I think the best glasses for reading greens are no glasses. I don't think that any glasses are gonna help you reading greens, but there are some days when I got a headache, I don't wanna deal with the sun. I can throw those on, it doesn't really mess with anything. This here is from Yobo. Um, it's a massage pistol. And this is actually gonna be trippy, because if you look at this, depending on how it catches the frame rate, like you, Jack can see this thing is moving really fast, but. If it catches the frame rate right, right, it's gonna look like it's very slowly moving up and down. I always think that's cool. You can see it. Yeah, anyway. Uh, I got an empty target stack in here, I'm not sure why. Which I guess brings us to this last spot here. This is the reason I have a ping bag and not a Titleist bag. It's because this is so clutch. This is the hip pocket, so you're carrying it and you never really notice this pocket, but in here I put everything that I would need for rain. So I have a bucket hat. I probably will literally never wear this hat, but I have a waterproof bucket hat, some rain gloves, and a rain hood, all in this little pocket here that I never even really think about. So that's nice. Also, just on a whole, and I'm sorry, Titleist, I know your bags have greatly improved in the last, what, 10 years probably? They've, they've doubled in quality. They still don't touch a ping bag. I'm sorry. Let's see, is that it? Oh, Pro XC Rangefinder. Um, if you watch Jack's What's in the Bag, he does not have one. He cannot afford great success. Unfortunately, he left his in Alexandria. But many tour life. Many tour life. Yeah, he left his rangefinder at a course 
an hour away. Now he's got to figure that whole situation out. I feel bad for him. But this rangefinder, Bushnell, if you're watching this, if you can create a rangefinder that has all these capabilities, I mean, this, this is the best gun I've ever owned by far. The problem is if you're walking, right, and you accidentally slide this thing against your pants, oops, now it's on slope mode, you're disqualified from the golf tournament. It's way too easy to get this thing to move back and forth. Other than that, best rangefinder I've ever had. I always just put it up on a golf club like that. I mean, I can shake this thing around, it's not going anywhere. It's clutch, I like having it there. That's pretty much it for the what's in the bag. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like. Give, us, give me a subscribe, for for four. I'd greatly appreciate it. Support a struggling mini tour pro. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. If you made it to the end of this video, if you're watching this right now, if you made it to the end, you're a real one. I appreciate you greatly. If you're a real one, I suggest going over to patreon.com, uh, checking out my Patreon page, get early access to all my videos. There's some content on there that is probably never gonna see YouTube as well. So if you wanna see that, five bucks a month, or if you want to subscribe to a lesson plan, that's an option as well. If you want a one-off lesson, if you want to send me some swing videos and get my thoughts back on how you can improve your golf swing, um, link in the description to my zip page where you can basically book a session with me and I'll help you out. I'll give you my thoughts. I'll uh, help you improve your golf swing. If not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.